Hello, my name is Janet Eagle and I'm the lead fluoroscopy radiographer in Craigavon Area Hospital. Hello, my name is Helena Kincaid. I'm an advanced practitioner um, in the radiography department and today I'm going to tell you about a new service that Janet and I have set up and successfully implemented within our department in Craigavon Area Hospital. The introduction of this completely radiographer-led service is a leading light initiative. It has successfully reduced the waiting times for the EHSG examinations from 14 weeks to totally eradicating the waiting list. We implemented the new service all the while delivering safe, high-quality care while affording best use of resources. So this is just a picture of our team. On the left, there's our invaluable radiography assistant, Audrey Mitchell, there's myself in the middle and Helena on the right. So we felt it was important to briefly describe what an HSG examination is and what it actually entails. During the procedure, a small catheter is gently placed into the uterine cavity using a sterile technique. Radiographic contrast or dye is then slowly injected via this catheter into the uterine cavity, allowing visualisation of the uterine cavity and the patency of the fallopian tubes to be assessed under fluoroscopic guidance. So why do we do these examinations? So these examinations are predominantly performed for the investigation of both primary and secondary infertility. Primary infertility is the inability to become pregnant after one year of trying to do so through unprotected intercourse. And secondary infertility is the inability to become pregnant or carry a pregnancy to full term after you've already had a baby and is more common than you might think. We also do this procedure to confirm the success of several sterilisation techniques such as Esure, which is fairly new to our trust. This is done as a day case where small sterilisation coils are placed into the fallopian tubes. The women then come back to us in three months to confirm that the tubes are occluded and that the procedure has actually been a success. And we also do this examination to assess congenital uterine abnormalities. Literature would suggest that 15% of couples may not get pregnant after one year of trying to do so, with one in seven couples experiencing problems with infertility during their married life. So the demand for these examinations will always be there. Many women would describe infertility as the most upsetting experience of their lives. Infertility for these women is in fact a major negative life event, which often sends them on an emotional roller coaster. Many are left feeling very depressed and angry. They feel hurt and alone. Some feel they are a failure, but some even have an obsessive thought. Many become desperate, but too embarrassed to talk to anybody about it. And on occasion, infertility has led to the breakdown of relationships. With all these factors considered, I'm sure you can imagine why an HSG examination is often described as an intimately invasive, emotionally and psychologically challenging examination to undertake, while still being the frontline test for infertility in women. Therefore, even a slight delay in the investigation process can be devastating for these couples. So, it was our vision to provide a high quality, caring and effective diagnostic imaging service, which is accessible and responsive to these women, whom are experiencing infertility problems within the Southern Trust and to deliver this service in a more timely and efficient manner in line with the NICE guidelines. So on to our journey. Historically within our department, our clinics would only run providing these five different staff group members were available. We have the consultant radiologist, the gynaecology registrar, the radiographer and the radiology nurse and also the radiography assistant with the sheer number of staff required for each clinic, while also depending on staff outside of our own department. I'm sure you can imagine why problems often arose. So the biggest problem at this stage is that only one radiologist covered our clinics. Clinics were further compromised due to the rotational nature of staff and leave commitments. This obviously had a huge impact on the service, leading to a huge backlog of these appointments. There was also no continuity of care, as five different people were involved with the patient during the examination process. So we looked to the effectiveness of SkillMix. We found an HSG course held in Sheffield Teaching Hospital, which we both attended. Luckily for us, we had a brilliant consultant radiologist, Dr. Hall, as our mentor, and he was extremely supportive throughout the entire process. We embarked upon a robust in-house training programme. We worked very closely with the consultant radiologist, to put robust systems of work into place. This ensured we continued to work within our scope of practice. 
we kept the comprehensive logbook of numbers to measure performance and compliance. And after completing the necessary logbook of numbers and auditing process, we were signed off as competent to both screen during and report on these examinations. So our next clinics were to run with the gynaecology registrar, us two radiographers trained to screen during and report on the HSG examinations, and Audrey, our radiography assistant. However, things weren't running as smoothly as we would have liked, and we were still encountering some problems. On occasion, due to unforeseen circumstances, gynaecology cover was not available. This resulted in cancellation of lists. On occasions, lists were cancelled at short notice and even on the day of the clinics. This obviously left these women feeling very distressed and angry, both with ourselves, the department and the trust. We realised that we were not meeting our vision of providing this service which was accessible and responsive to these women and the trust were not delivering on its aims and objectives. So, we looked at the possibility of us undertaking this gynaecology role, providing we had appropriate training. So again, we embarked upon a robust in-house training programme, this time with the consultant gynaecologist during his day of procedure lists, where we learned the catheterisation technique. We spent sufficient time observing then performing the technique under his close supervision until he was satisfied we had acquired the correct knowledge and skills to perform this procedure. We then catheterised in our own clinic under the indirect supervision of two very supportive gynaecology registrars. Again, all the necessary logbooks and training records were completed and signed off, allowing us to independently catheterise in clinic to the same high level as that of the gynaecology registrar. By embarking on a training programme like this, it ensured that we had the underlying knowledge and skills required to competently perform the procedure on par with the very high standards of both the radiologist and the gynaecology registrar. However, for us, it was a little bit daunting. We certainly were stepping out of our comfort zone, not only within our own silo of radiology, where we are undertaking our own radiographer role, but also that as the doctor of the consultant radiologist. And we were further stepping out of our comfort zone into that of gynaecology and undertaking the gynaecology aspect of the procedure. So at present, this is where we are. We have almost reached our goal to run an autonomous clinic, totally independent of all other departments. However, change was inevitable to deliver the HSG service in a timely and responsive manner for these patients, and we seized the opportunity to improve service delivery. So once Janet and I were up and running independently, we wanted to put the patient at the heart of everything we did. So we wanted to develop and implement strategies that put the patient at the focus of our service. So the first thing that we looked at was we wanted to make our environment less clinical. So we looked at providing music, relaxation music, and we infused aromatherapy oils into the environment to provide a more relaxed environment for the ladies. We also wanted to make the service more personal for the ladies and provide better continuity of care. For HSG examinations, ladies have to follow a very specific preparation. Historically, under the radiologist, if these ladies did not follow the correct preparation, they were sent away and had to wait three to four months before they ever had another appointment. Janet and I are very conscious that under the NICE guidelines, these ladies are already waiting over a year before they come for their HSG examination. We didn't want them to have to wait any longer than they needed to. So for ladies that did not follow their preparation, Janet and I would have offered an ad hoc service. We really needed to get to the root cause of why these ladies were turning up ill prepared. So we engaged with the PPI within the trust and worked very closely with a girl called Sinead. So we went back and we looked at the original appointment letter. As it stands now, this is the revised letter. But the original appointment letter basically was the same at the top. It had the type of examination, date of appointment, time of appointment and the location. But the rest of it was all just a paragraph. So it's amazing what fresh eyes can do because the first thing she had noticed was the location was wrong. On our original letter it said radiology department. In fact all the signs in Craig Avon Hospital say x-ray department. So that was the first change we made. We then took the paragraph and we divided it up into bullet points and we used words like essential and important and preferred to make this much clearer for the ladies to understand. These letters then went into circulation. Right away we noticed results because historically 
we probably had two or three ladies per clinic having to be turned away. Now we were finding that there was maybe two or three ladies per month being turned away. But we didn't want to have to turn anybody away. So what we did was we went back and we looked at the letter again. And the second bullet point, we spelled out exactly what they had to do for the preparation. And actually to date, we have no ladies turning up that are ill-prepared. Working concurrently with the appointment letter, we also developed an information leaflet. This information leaflet goes out with the appointment letter and the feedback from these leaflets are very positive. So really it is about improving the communication, improves the service user's experience and therefore you have a more satisfied customer. So Janet and I are very proud of what we have achieved and we want to share our knowledge, skill and experience. And we have used many platforms to do so. To date, we have been recognised for our work by the Society of Radiographers who awarded us UK Team of the Year in November at a very glitzy affair in the Houses of Commons. And we were also overall winners in the AHP Awards in January this year. Looking forward, we continuously audit our dose and our reports. Every 10th report that, we, that Janet and I generate will go to Dr Hall for auditing. And we want to continuously improve our service. So we have introduced patient satisfaction surveys because we value the ladies' feedback. We also further want to expand our service. At present, we are developing a patient group directive for azithromycin. Some ladies that come to our clinics need a one-off dose of azithromycin antibiotic. But what we want to do is be able to supply the azithromycin ourselves so that we provide this holistic radiographer-led HSG clinic. And this is actually just some of the feedback from the um, patient satisfaction service that we've put out. And it is testimony to the service that we're providing. So is it good value for money? Well, yes, it is, because we have gone from having five members of staff, of staff involved in an HSG examination to having three members of staff. So from a resource and time perspective, it is good value. There's no radiologist or gynaecologist cover required, and this in itself has saved the trust £15,000 a year. So to conclude, the introduction of this service has already shown great benefits for all involved. Firstly, for the patients, they are seen in a more timely manner. Waiting lists halved from 14 weeks down to no waiters. There's now continuity of care where the radiographer is with the patient throughout the whole examination. Better information is provided to the patient as more time is spent with the patient to reassure and encourage and answer any questions. We can also offer next day appointments if they have not followed the correct preparation. This allows us to be more responsive to their needs and to provide a service at ad hoc basis if and when required. We feel we also provide a kind, caring, empathetic and reassuring atmosphere for all these anxious ladies. It is trailblazing for our trust as they are leading the field in the development regionally. And this service ensures the trust visions and objectives are being met in this area. For us as radiographers, we have enhanced job satisfaction and have a real sense of achievement. It is a really good example of skill mix as it has allowed the radiologist to go on to perform more specialised examinations. And for the gynaecologist, it has freed them up to start a new initiative within their specialised fields. Early pregnancy clinics and family planning clinics. In essence, everyone is a winner. For us, it's all about having the right people in the right place at the right time. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, here's Janet's and my contact details.